What's going on, everybody? This is Jen catching you on DTWJ, representing NJ all day. And um, it's still... Why do I want to say July? I'm so weird. I still... Yeah, anyway. It's uh, March the 3rd, same day. Um, just like an update. Still. I'm just going to be updating for as long as I need to. Um, I'm not a little Miss Perfect. I never was. Uh, so for any asshole out there that is trying to look at me and be all like, look at little Miss Perfect over here dealing with stuff sober. Um, I went to the store. I did. Cheers, big ears. I did. Know why I went to the store? Be real honest. Because over the course of the past, I don't know how many fucking days, I found out the 26th this happened. So we got 26. It was that evening on the 26th. So 26, 27, 28, the 1st, 2nd, 3rd. It's been five days. I've had four days to process all of this sober instead of um, numbing myself. I'm not numbing myself now. Right now I'm actually trying to relax a little bit because I've been working my ass off. Um, it's also the first day I left my house since AJ had passed away. And I'll be real honest. Okay. Listen. I have them right here. These glasses, okay, they're transition lenses, so after a while, they become sunglasses. Nobody has to see my eyes. It's still winter. It's going to be snowing this whole week. Temps are mad low. What do I have to do? Bundle up, baby. Um, yeah, so sunglasses, bundling up. I have the, the head headband on. I got my hood up, uh, the part of my jacket that zips up. I just one of these to cover my nose and mouth so I could stay warm while I'm walking and I was just doing that that's exactly how I wanted it that's actually how I wanted it about like two days ago when I ordered food and uh, for delivery I got Japanese and Chinese from the same restaurant it was awesome uh, yeah I got the Kung Kung Pao or yeah, Kung Pao tofu and uh, a salmon roll. That with some wasabi and soy sauce, and I'm a happy lady. Um, so I got those two things, and I just I, I wanted to go there so bad, just because like I really love how that place feels, and I thought that it would be healthy for me, but. To deal with people on the way there, especially drivers, they suck. Not even funny. I couldn't put up with it. Not when I'm warning. I can't. I fucking can't. Uh, just going on the way to the store, I saw a man that was disabled. And he was walking funny. I don't know how to describe it. I'm sorry. Um... I don't know exactly what the name of the disease is, but it like kind of takes your legs out, so like you walk funny. And I was just so fucking sad to see it, cause like it was in like a big intersection in town where the people are less likely to drive carefully and care about the pedestrians. And um. Excuse me, I need to move that over because I'm getting notifications on Facebook and I really don't want to deal with it right now. Um, the most difficult intersection to be crossed, he was trying to cross it. And he ended up like trying to walk as fast as he could, which is really fucked up. You know, that, that actually hurt me to see that. The fact that like... He wasn't, he wasn't that old at all, but he had to do that because you got cars whipping around, cars whipping around, cars trying to get 
fight each other. Never mind having regard for pedestrians. Of course he felt the need to run as best as he could across the street. That always upsets me. That's fucking ridiculous because I know that one day, I know that one day I'm going to get old and I'm going to try to cross the street and that shit better not be happening to me because I will bust some fucking windows. No doubt I would. That bothers me. So, because I saw that and it took me longer to get to a store, um, I ended up basically crossing the dude through as many intersections as it took to get to that store. Yeah, that's right, I did. Every single block. He didn't know I was doing it at first. I guess he thought that I was just some arrogant asshole trying to walk past him or shove past him. Not true. He got to the next corner and uh, I was able to walk fast enough to get to him. I didn't just like awkwardly stand next to him, but like I kind of not even for a half second stood next to him because he stood to wait for the cars to stop. Like coming through going mad like it's a fucking racetrack so we can cross the street. Instead, I was right by him. He was right here and I was right here where they would just be turning in. I didn't do my normal traffic lady thing. No. no. I just walked real slow and I looked at the person driving. Eye contact means everything. I looked straight at the person that was driving, just like this. That's right. Motherfuckers will stop. I don't have to put my hands up or yell or blow a whistle. That bitch will stop. So they did, and he was able to cross every block. Every block. But that's not the that's not the part that shocked me. Not at all. Used to it. When I got out of the store finally and I purchased my beer. <laughs> That's right, I got beer. Cheers, big ears. I did. Cheers, big ears. When I finally got out of the store and I was walking back. <clears throat> I saw him again. Except I ended up putting this that I had down because I saw that he was walking toward me. Thanks to my glasses, I'm able to see. And I smiled at him and I said, Good morning. He smiled back and he said the same. We just spoke both kept walking our ways. See, things in life that happen, happen for a reason. And I find that very beautiful. And um, gives me a sense of comfort to know that uh, even if somebody is disabled or elderly, and it seems like a situation that we're all so worried about because we all have you know relatives who are aging that we care about maybe we just care about somebody that we happen to witness in a situation and we want to look after them because we care we can't control everything that can happen but at the time that we're present we can make it better and uh, <laughs> that, hmm, that fills me with a lot of hope. It really does, because uh, I understand that I can't expect everybody in society to understand my values or to do what I do. But I'm going to still do it regardless, because I know that one day I'm going to be old and gray. And I'm not going to be able to walk as quick. 
I'm going to need somebody to look after me, related or not. That's just something that, you know, really hit me today. And I think that, you know, when things like, things like death happen, you're able to kind of zero in on life a lot, uh, a lot closer. You're able to see, sense everything completely with all the senses that you have. And because of your attention to those things, some of the most meaningful things can happen. Does it give me hope? A little bit. It does. Uh, not completely, though, because I know that the majority of society is selfish. But I can only do my best every day. And um, that's part of my morning process right now is to do the best that I can every day. And that's exactly what I'm doing. No. <laughs> not by a long shot. I am not perfect. But I always do the right things. And I always do my best. It's been John catching you on DTWJ. Keeping it real as always. See you on the next one.